doing during the Sunday School Hour a presentation on his tour as uh, a chaplain, military chaplain in Iraq uh, in 2005. And I'm sure that will be very uh, interesting. Everyone is invited to come for that. A couple of notes on the uh, Easter and the Holy Week and Easter schedule. You've seen this, the services Monday, Thursday. Uh, at uh, 7 p.m. with communion, then Friday at 7 p.m. And then Easter Sunday, there will be a 7.30 worship service. And then after that, breakfast. We hope that you will all come and share in the Easter breakfast. There will also be an Easter egg hunt. Uh, and there is a sign up for the Easter egg breakfast on the back of this uh, page. Uh, if you could sign, uh, fill that out, please. And then uh, second worship service at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday. Uh, last but not least, you still have opportunity to sign up for Easter flowers, and there's a sign up for that on the green sheet. Sorry to hit you with so many announcements, but uh, I hope they're helpful for you. Those are the announcements for today. We are going to begin with the first hymn, Let Us Rise.
Christ and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you for this opportunity to continue our Lenten journey here in your house this morning. We stand in awe of your sacrificial love for a royal official and his son. Grant us confidence, dear Lord, that you love each of us with the same great and undying love. By your spirit and by your grace, may we grow in loving others as you love us. In your holy name, we give thanks and pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, beginning with the 33rd verse. Teach us, Lord, to trust and follow your holy word. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in them. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be there feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. Behold, I long for your precepts, and your righteousness give me life. Here ends the reading. Our epistle reading is from James chapter 1, beginning with the 22nd verse. Don't really listen to the word, do what it says. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Herein ends the reading. Please stand for the singing of our service verse and the reading of today's gospel lesson. This was 
Now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, sure. 
Okay. <laughs> Take one. Everybody getting one? There you go. Do we have enough? All right. Okay. Can you share one of those? Which one do you want to give back? Thank you. Who would like that? Okay. <laughs> Everybody got something? All right. So listen, I am so happy. You believe my promise? Yes. And you did what I asked you to do. In the same way, let's believe Jesus' promises and do whatever he tells us to do. How do you get that to work? You just got to bop it, I think. And then it will... There you go. Okay. <laughs> let's stand up and pray. Stand up. Hold your hands, bow your head. And why don't you say after me, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises. For promising that you love us. For promising that you love us. You will always care for us. Always care for us. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. To believe your promises. And to do what you tell us to do. Amen. Thank you. Go back to your seats and let's rise and sing the next day.
We're now at the end of John chapter 4, and Jesus has traveled through Samaria. He's going uh, from starting out in Jerusalem, up to Samaria, and now he has returned to his home territory of Galilee. In fact, he returned to the village of Cana, where sometime earlier Jesus had turned the water into wine. The central character of today's text did not live in Cana, however. He lived in Capernaum. Capernaum is the leading city in Galilee. It was 18 miles to the east of Cana, uh, right at the very northern tip of the Sea of Galilee. That person is called a certain royal official. He's a man who served in the court of King Herod. As a royal official, he was no doubt a person of some wealth, some influence, some probably high social standing. Our text, however, is not concerned with his wealth or his social standing. Rather, John portrays this man as a person of great faith, specifically as a person who took Jesus at his word. Someone else has called him the man who went home with a promise in his pocket. And went home with a promise in his pocket. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at this word. Lord, speak to our hearts. Help us to learn what it means for us, how important it is for us to take Jesus at his word. Well, let's briefly reconsider what happened here. Jesus was in Canaan. The royal official was in Capernaum. He had heard about Jesus. Because Jesus had been down in Jerusalem for the Passover. A lot of Galileans had gone down there. We were told earlier in John that John Jesus had performed miraculous signs there in Jerusalem at the time of the Passover. So the people had seen it, those same Galileans had returned out of Galilee. Galilee and, and there with Jesus. So uh, Jesus' fame was spreading. Everybody knew about him. The royal official knew about Jesus. I heard at least the time that he was content to just listen to whatever stories were being told and so forth until something happened. His son became ill. The illness persisted. It grew worse and soon his son was near death. So the man left his home in Capernaum. He traveled those 18 miles to Cana, and he found Jesus by virtue, I suppose, of his position, his elevated social status. He was able to uh, wiggle his way through the crowd and gain an audience with Jesus. John says he went to Jesus and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Jesus' response challenged the man and others gathered around him to look into their heart. Jesus said, and this is the same as last week, he uses the, the plural you. He said, unless you, that is you people, the crowd around, unless you see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. Jesus challenged them to look into their hearts. He was asking, are you really trusting in me? Or are you just interested in what I can do? Well, this man was not put off. He was persistent in his prayer. We're told, he said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Well, Jesus did not answer that man's specific request. Rather, Jesus said, You must help. Your son will live. And with that word of assurance, the man was satisfied. That's all he needed. We're told the man took Jesus at his word and departed. He went home with a promise in his pocket. <coughs> well, at 18 miles of the rugged Galilean hills, it was too long a journey to make in one day. So the next day, while this guy was still on his way, some of his servants met him. And they met him with exciting news. Your son got better all of a sudden at the seventh hour yesterday. And we're told the father realized that this was the exact time in which Jesus had said, in your son will live, so he and the whole family believed. Well, that is a sketch of the story. We have to ask, as we always do, what does it mean for us today? Brothers and sisters, what does it mean for us to take Jesus at his word? Well, first of all, taking Jesus at his word, on the most basic level, 
involves listening to his word. There is no way I can be a person of faith. There is no way I can follow the Lord's direction and guidance in my life if I'm not listening to his word, if I'm not hearing his promises. You know, there are times for all of us when we are weighed down by burdens, when we're stressed out by the challenges of daily life, stuff happens, doesn't it? Stuff keeps on happening. Personally, I've had a couple of challenging weeks. Now, no major problems, just maybe think of them as, as monkey wrenches thrown into my well planned, well laid out work weekly retreat. So the week before last, our stove broke down. It took me more than half a day to figure out what the problem was, to get behind it and check out the broken parts and go to the parts store and, and get a new part and put it. It just sort of messed up my schedule. Not only for that day, but for the week. Last week, we changed our internet provider. <laughs> it's easy, they said. <laughs> it was a very rocky changeover, and it's not done yet. <laughs> so there are times we all have when it's very easy to get caught up in issues, get dragged down by unexpected stuff, particularly if we are not listening to the word and promises of God. For our Lord official, the time came for him to leave his dying son's bedside and go to Jesus. And the time also comes for you and me, brothers and sisters. The time comes for us every single day to step away, to turn away from those monkey wrenches, those aggravations, the stuff that happens, and turn and tune our hearts and ears into the words and promises of God. Taking Jesus at his word involves, at the most basic level, listening to his word. Are you doing that? Secondly, taking Jesus at his word involves taking it to heart. It involves applying to our own heart to our specific need. And certainly the royal official did exactly that. That promise of Jesus was for him and his son, and he believed the Lord's promise and went on with joy. How can we do that? Well, whenever we hear the word, whether we are here in church or we're listening to a preaching or teaching on our road or in the car, in our personal or family devotions at home, whenever we hear the word, it's helpful to ask three questions. First of all, what is God saying? Second, what is he saying to me? And third, what is he saying to me today? It's easy to keep those questions in your mind. So first of all, what is he saying? In other words, what is the basic meaning of this text? What's going on here? What is the essential meaning of these words? Then what is he saying to me? How does this word of God apply to my life? And then what is he saying to me today? What is he saying that really relates to what I am dealing with in my life right here and now? So I told you I've had a couple of challenging weeks that were just disrupted. The other day I went to visit one of our shut-ins. A person who has far heavier burdens than I do. And I shared the word of God with him. Psalm 46. And I came to the words in that psalm, Be still, and know that I am God. And all of a sudden I knew, those words were not just for him, they were for me. God would say, hey Mark, listen up. Be still. Chill. I've got it. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, take Jesus at his word. First of all, listen to it. Second, take it to heart. What is God saying to me today? Then third, and last, taking Jesus at his word involves acting on it. It involves doing what he tells us to do. And acting 
God Jason's word is not always easy, but it is in fact where the rubber hits the road. The royal official made that trip back from Caperna from Caperna to Kenya. His purpose and plan was to get Jesus and bring him back to his dying son's bedside. Jesus said, that is not necessary. You go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. He didn't have Jesus, but he had Jesus' promise, and that was enough. You know, at the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. He's telling us it's not enough to hear. Jesus expects us to ask. So really, the question for me, the question for you always is, what are we going to do with the word Jesus has spoken to our heart? How is God speaking to you? What steps of faith is he asking you to take? Well, here are some possibilities. First of all, take Jesus at his word and accept his forgiveness. No matter how terrible your sins, Jesus has washed them all the way so brothers and sisters come to the table, receive the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Jesus, and then go with a spring in your step with the unshakable certainty and joy of your salvation. Take Jesus at his word and go to him in prayer. He invites you to come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Are you accepting that invitation? Or are you insisting on carrying your burdens all on your own? How about this? Take Jesus at his word and bring him offerings fit for a king. Time and time again, Jesus promises that he will bless our glad and generous giving. Are you stingy? Miserly in your giving because you're afraid that you won't have enough? Take a step of faith and give gladly and freely. Take Jesus at his word and tell someone else the good news. For Jesus has promised that if we but plant the seed, he will enable it to sprout and grow. Perhaps the Lord is saying to you today, as he said to me, be still and know that I am God. Stop praying. Stop worrying. I've done it. If that is the case, before you walk out of this place this morning, cast your cares, your health concerns, your money problems, your family stress and conflict. Cast your cares on Him. He has promised that He will care for you. Then, like the royal official, go home. Go home with confidence and joy. Go home with God's promise in your pocket, for that is all you need. Brothers and sisters, this is really the essence of Christian faith and life. Taking Jesus at his word. What does that mean? Yeah.
yourself to be a God who loves to bless his people. We rejoice in the blessing of new life in Christ that you have given us. We rejoice in the promise of everlasting life that you have given us in Jesus, the Son. Father, sustain our life, and as you so richly bless us, enable us to be a blessing to our families, friends, and many others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole church on earth. Be with brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering persecution. Sustain them in their faith. Deliver them from their trials and troubles. And give them strength to lift high the cross of Jesus, even in their perilous situations. Bless the preaching and teaching of your word here at St. James. Like the royal official of Capernaum, may we gladly hear your word, believe your promises, and willingly carry out your commands. Make our faith fruitful for the good of all we serve in our congregation, our community, and beyond. We pray, Lord, that you will bless today's Soul Hope Service Project. Bless both the givers here and the receivers in Africa. May every pair of shoes that is received by people in Uganda be a testament of your love. We also pray for your guidance upon our call committee as new interviews begin. According to your wisdom and will, provide this God as a faithful shepherd under Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our fathers that they may see in the steadfast love of our Heavenly Father a source and pattern for their fatherly love. We pray for mothers. Give them patience, wisdom, and strength to care for the daily needs of their families. Support and encourage them through the faithful love of their husbands. We pray for every family. Whatever our situation may be, Lord, help us to live as brothers and sisters in Christ, with loving care for one another at all times. Lord, in your mercy, we rejoice with those who rejoice this day. Today we join our brother and sister, Rod and Ken Jones, in giving uh, thanks and expressing our gratitude for all of the men and women who serve in the United States military, uh, either here or wherever they are around the world. Thank you for their service. We pray, Lord, that you would protect them, keep them safe, that you would enable them to be instruments, not of violence and warfare, but instruments of peace and love and that in due time you would bring them safely back to their families. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for all who are ill or struggling in other ways. We ask your blessing for our brother Bob Geel and our sister in Christ, Chris Dellinger, who are trying to recover from their uh, illnesses and surgeries. Lord, have compassion on them. And according to your good and gracious will, restore them to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless us now as we come to the Lord's table. May the body and blood of Jesus give us strength and joy in the certainty of our forgiveness and Christ's powerful and loving presence within us. May his loving presence bless us now and sustain us as we go from here into the days and activities of this coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
of your Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.